now what I want to do is switch gears and we're going to repeat some of this but let's look at a lot of these things in Mathematica. Now the first conceptual issue I want to deal with in Mathematica is sort of lists, vectors, and matrices. So if I do that, that object is what we would normally think of as a vector. Mathematica, we're going to specifically call it a list. It's a list of numbers. I could put letters in there. I can put strings. I can make lists of functions. I can make lists of graphs. Any object that Mathematica can deal with can be put in a list like this. And then I can find the elements of my list by using my double brackets. And if I want to, if it's numbers and I want to use it as sort of a mathematical idea, let's make a matrix So if I'm going to type in a matrix by hand, I'm going to show you shortcuts in a moment. I just got to keep track. This bracket's going to be my rows. This bracket's going to be my columns. There's my matrix. If I want to look at it nicely, I use the command matrix form. And it looks like an actual matrix. Now, if I want to get a problem wrong, Um, let's just, let's call it wrong. I will do the following. Matrix form of 2, 2, 1, 0. Looks okay. Let's see what's wrong about it. Let's do, well, first of all, if I do A times vector, using my normal multiplication command, it gets upset because they're of different shapes. But if I do a dot vector, oh, I made a two by two matrix. It's really getting upset. Let's make a new vector. Sorry about that. There's my new vector. Now let's do a times vector. It's still upset because what it's trying to do is trying to thread, which means it's trying to like multiply element by element. Uh, <sighs> shoot, it, yeah, I do, I do. I can't type. I think, it, I hope it still gets upset. It should. No, it didn't get upset. Okay, but now it did what it was supposed to do. Oh, it didn't get upset because it can do that and that. So it's taken this one and multiplied it. Let's get rid of all the things that are upsetting us. It, it's taking this one and multiplying it by the top, and this one and multiplying it by the bottom, which is not the right thing because I ended up with a matrix. Right? A vector, a matrix times a vector is supposed to be a vector. And so what we want to do is a dot vector 2. And then we get our vector 6, 2. We also can do our vector 2 dot a. And notice, as I said, that's not the same as a dot vector 2. It's now 5, 4. And you can check that with our formula that I gave you. And you should check it. I'm going to leave this as an exercise for you to check. But I wanted to go back. Remember, we have this object wrong. Right, if I do wrong dot vector 2, notice it gives me wrong dot vector 2. This is not a matrix. This is a graphical object. It, it, it's something that is displayed really nicely. And that's the problem. So you can't do any matrix things to it. I can't take the determinant of it. Determinant of wrong is the determinant of wrong. However, the determinant of A is a single number. You will make this mistake because you will want your matrix to look nicely if you're not careful. If you really want to do this, there's a couple things you can do. One right, right way to do this is to make sure you use parentheses 
and do slash slash matrix form. Now it looks like it's wrong, but now if I execute it, it actually works. And it works because of the order of operations. I put my parentheses, I set that equal to wrong, and then I said, okay, now display it nicely. So I haven't assigned anything the graphical look of it. Um, the way you can test that is if I type wrong in this case, Mathematica gives me a matrix. If I go back and get rid of my parentheses, and now I type wrong, it's still in that nice form. Notice getting rid of the parentheses says do this, put it in a matrix form, and then set it equal to wrong. That will again be wrong. The parentheses was what made it correct. Questions on that? I just, that I know, I've just seen that mistake made a lot. And so I wanted to highlight it. Um, one thing, you know, if I go with my palettes, so I didn't really show those to you yet. Palettes are very useful ways of getting things correct, um, getting commands entered quickly. So there's a whole bunch of basic commands, square roots, integrals, and stuff. But you can also have your matrix commands. So I can, I don't like how the palettes get in the way a lot. But other than that, they're pretty cool. And if I come here and I go B equals, and I stick in a palette, notice it's actually entering a matrix for me, right? And you can tell that by the form of the output if you're unsure. So this I can now use as a matrix. So even though it looked like a matrix form, if you're, if you're doing a pretty big matrix, this is sometimes an easier way to enter than typing with the brackets. Any questions on those few things? Yeah. Just go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you take output um, 20, would that give a matrix or the graphical form? Okay, so output 20 right now because of this thing is, is actually the graphical thing because there's been no parentheses. Um, and you can see it's sticking the little word matrix form in here, which is kind of my hint. Well, if you just do output 20. Yeah, so if I do percent 20, oh wait. Is it? I've never done that. Okay, now why did that work? Oh, because because uh, that's interesting. I have never done that before because I could have sworn the output would be the whole thing. Look, we've discovered something new. This is why I love working with Mathematica. Um, so it's obviously, and I don't know why, happy with that as the output. Yes? Now, would that work for Mathematica 9.0 but not 8.0? That, that could be, but let's, let's try something even more important. Let's take the determinant of a percent, 26, to make sure it's really working and we're not confused. Yeah, so it's really working. So I don't know if that would work in 8.0. Right yeah. Um, so clearly the output is not taken into account that I've applied matrix form as a function to it. And I'm not sure why. I will try to find out why. Um, because certainly when you set it thing equal, it's taking the whole thing. And I don't know why the output wouldn't take the whole thing. So. So if we put wrong equal to matrix form and then the matrix, then we wouldn't be able to do it, right? Now that, that, that's an interesting question. It may be the way it's executing the slash. I, Nope, it still somehow is, is knowing that what we really wanted was the matrix. So I'll have to figure that out. I'll find that out. That's clearly something with the way it works down in its core. 
Other questions? It worked in, okay. Couple other things to realize. So that was using a one dimensional list as a vector. We also can treat the standard um, a standard one by two or two by one or three by one or one by three matrix as a row vector or a column vector. So in our notation, when you're doing things like V times A versus A times V, there's an actual real mathematical thing you're doing here. And you're often lo looking at covariant or contravariant vectors. You are using a row vector times your matrix when you're doing it this way. And this way, you're doing your matrix times a column vector. And for many applications up to now, you haven't had to distinguish between a column vector and a row vector or a vector that goes on the right or left of a matrix. But they are different mathematical entities. And Mathematica allows you to deal with that by explicitly writing a row vector. And have I made a 3 by 3 matrix yet? No, I've not. So let's make a new matrix. We'll call it C. So there's C. And now one thing I can do, notice if I do row vec, if I could type row vec dot C, why did it not execute? Maybe because I didn't execute it. It's happy. It gives me another row vector. If I do C dot row vec, it's going to complain. And notice it tells you tensors. It knows we're trying to use them as tensors. They don't have compatible shapes. I can't multiply this vector on the right of this. Notice with the list it worked. It knew how to do that. It knew how to handle it. What I need to do is make a column vector, which is the transpose of the row vector. And notice its format, right? As we said, the first set of brackets is the rows. So up there, I have the two brackets and then the brackets. Here, I've got little brackets around each one because each of these is now a column. And if I do matrix form, you can see that it is indeed a column vector. And now I can do C dot column vector. And I get out a column vector. So you really want to be aware of that. When, when you get in applications where it matters that your tensor is actually a 1 by n tensor or an n by 1, and you're not, you can't just think of everything as an equal vector, Mathematica can handle it for you and do it the right way. The couple other things about that. One of the handiest ways to generate matrices is with the table command. So just as a fun one to do, I might do i plus j. And I do it i from 1 to 3. And maybe I want j to go from 0 to 2. And, and I get my matrix out. And I could have some complicated function in there. I don't even need i and j to show up everywhere. I mean, my matrix may just have i's in it. And so my first row is 1, second row is 2, third row is 3's, and the column, it doesn't change. Um, and so table is a good way without any do loops or for loops. And you can put as many indices as you want there, so you can make it as nested as you want. Um, notice as soon as you have two indices, you will get a matrix. And sometimes you want to go over i and j and just end up with a single set of um, parentheses. And that gets a little trickier to mess with. And table doesn't all, then you may have to be stuck doing a do loop, because table may not generate exactly what you want. 
the other thing to notice about listed vectors, and it's the last sort of Mathematica thing we'll do, is recall that solve gives us a list of lists. Right? Solve assumes there might be more solutions. And so this is inside a list. What does that mean? Well, let's suppose I wanted to do apply this rule to this expression for x. So I have my slash dot for applying my rule percents telling me to use the last output. I'm going to replace x with minus 3 halves. Notice it works, but I ended up with a vector. And I probably didn't want that. I probably wanted this to be a number. But I had my two parentheses here, so it's doing it still inside that parentheses. The, the common thing to do, if, if you know ahead of time, you're not going to want those extra parentheses because of the way you're going to use the substitution rules, is you flatten the solution. And notice flatten removes one level of brackets. And you can actually give flatten options and remove the inside ones or the outside ones or a different level depending on how many you have. So flatten can also be a way to deal with tables that give you a list of a list when you really just want one list. So it's a good way to remove brackets. And now, if I do this, I get a number. Okay. There are times where, you know, you may or may not want it flattened. So notice this did something a little bit weird. It, it really wasn't able to deal with the fact that I had two solutions, even though I gave it that. If we look at it, it's just picking the first and executing it. So here, if I want to get both solutions out, I'm not going to flatten it, and then I get both solutions. Now, if I only wanted one, they happen to be the same, so I'm not going to be able to tell. If I only wanted one, then I would pull it out by indexing it. No, because flatten is just turning it to less of a vector than it was before. It's flattening it. And yeah, so it's not, yeah, it's, I don't think it comes from that. 